And yeah, fortunately enough, we have Dom in the studio here, Dom Mackay, who's going to sing and uh, talk about his music, which is... And tap dance and put a hat on the pavement for us. Draw a hat on the... Sorry? No, put a hat on the pavement for us. Put a hat on the yeah. pavement. So, yeah, so if you're passing by and you want to put slip $50 under the door, you know what where we are. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, Tom, how are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. Tom. Yes. Tell us about your, your music. Um, how long have you been playing guitar? Well, I picked up guitar when I was 15 years old. I'm now... Oh, God... To say 32. Okay, yeah. Spring um, chicken. Yeah. yeah. Uh, compared to some, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you wait until I get my Zimmer frame and get it over there. <laughs> yeah, so I picked up guitar at 15. Um, learned a few a few chords off my father and then just uh, continued practicing every night by myself. I think that's the age where I, I quit TV. That's right, I quit TV. Quit all the, the junk shows and, and picked up the guitar and just sat in my room every evening listening to Jimi Hendrix and um, and trying to copy every note he played. Mm. Um, yeah. Brilliant. It's much better than watching television. Absolutely. Being sort of conditioned into a consumerist mindset mm. that most TV does. Yeah. When BB and I went along to hear you, you're playing all sort of folky stuff. When did that sort of capture your attention? I think I grew up with folky stuff. Um, Bob Dylan and a whole lot of traditional English stuff that my dad played all the time. And blues as well was a big influence on my music in the beginning. So I think that was there from the start. Right, so you you didn't really get into the carry-on with the rock, even though you started playing with Jimi Hendrix? And- yeah, yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. I definitely did, um, but I guess uh, I've spent time on on a number of different styles, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, the folk stuff's one of them, and then the um, the rock stuff. I, I, I studied electric guitar at university for a couple of years, and then quit that and took off travelling. So um, I was right into the electric until till I took off travelling, and you you can't carry that with mm. you because then you've got to have your you know your Marshall stack and everything as well, and your backpack, and that that mm. doesn't work. So it was acoustic from then on in, and I've I've barely played electric guitar since I left Australia when I was twenty one. Left you, Australia? Where did you go? I went uh, firstly to England, and I worked there and um, travelled Europe and into Morocco as well. Worked and and uh, studied French in France for about seven months. Um, so I spent about two years in that area of the world and then um, travelled over to Turkey via aeroplane and then pretty much travelled across land except for jumping a couple of oceans mm-hmm. uh, all the way back to Melbourne from there. Excellent. So you came down through Asia? or Yeah, yeah. I went through uh, Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, India, uh, Nepal... Uh, Burma, Thailand, Indonesia. Then I uh, caught a flight across uh, to Darwin and hitchhiked down from there back to Melbourne. That was uh, all up from the age of 21. I travelled till I was 24. So it, uh, it, yeah, it was a three-year stint away from home. Mm. Mm. When you went through those, um, <clears throat> yeah, in particular the, the Asian countries, did you pick up any musical influence? Or? Not so much. Um, definitely loved a lot of the music I heard, particularly in Morocco, mm-hmm. actually, um, of all places, that Arabic music. And, and I remember hearing uh, Berbers, the mountain people, chanting in the distance and just being touched by that, the raw rawness and the um, just the natural sound of their voices just echoing through the, through the mountains. But, yeah, I can't say the... I can't say that the local music had all that much of an influence on me at that mm. time they were more interested in hearing me play rock and roll i think <laughs> that, that's quite a deep and powerful song you know about about um potential the, you know, well the inevitable mm. which is death you know mm. and sure. waiting for the day wow so how, how did that experience influence your your thinking or your life it, it certainly gave me a a sense of presence or 
importance of presence in you know and to to try and enjoy what we have now mm. rather than working towards something that you know you you may never atri- achieve and placing all your happiness based on those potential achievements yeah that's so a deep question baby. living in the now sort of thing yeah, yeah. I, I suppose yeah, to put yeah. It simply wow yeah, and nice. and you know yeah just not not placing our happiness on things that that may occur in the future or not too much at least mm-hmm. trying to you know i guess i've tried to live my life in a way that's going to make me you know or allow me to be as as happy as possible mm. in the in you know this present time that i'm living you obviously go for english folk what do you what do you think of the american folk songs compared to the english style Ooh. <laughs> controversial question oh we have um, a controversy here in the back case. <laughs> uh, i love them both i think that you know there's artists from all over the world who are, are brilliant and to me it doesn't it's not really an issue if it's american or, or, or english um I, I just you know i love the the artists for who they are and what they do that's a good answer from a global global um, traveller. Traveller yeah. was that was that PC enough? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, it was good. Other than this, you're also a martial into martial arts. Do you want to? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm a, a kung fu instructor. That's my other passion. Mm-hmm. Been uh, well studying martial arts most of my life, but seriously for about um, eight years. Yeah, I've got about twenty students at the moment. It's fantastic. Lovely. Yeah, I'm running adults' classes and kids' classes. Yeah. So Google, Don Mackay, that's M-C-K-A-Y. That was a very powerful song. Do you, do you actually want to talk about that one? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> something that was, it's about something that was pertinent at the time that I wrote it and that, yeah. that still really is. I uh, mm, don't know if I want to go there. Um, I guess I can talk about it symbolically. Mm without talking about the exact experience that it's about. It's about uh, taking one's path on, on one's own. Mm. And there's a, there's a line in it that everybody seems to remember. Um, you will not find God until the Antichrist is free. And uh, the second time round when I sing that, I say you will not find peace until the Antichrist is free, which to me is a very similar sort of concept. And uh, that is referring basically to this locked up pent up anger that we can Mm. hold and unless we release it you know unless we face our own demons Mm. then we're never gonna we're never gonna find that peace and and in fact we will not only damage ourselves but quite possibly damage others around us through holding on to that and not being not willing to to face it and not willing to um yeah to to deal with it and 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 recognize the power of it very true. Do you find most of your songs are written out of the need to get those issues dealt with? In a way, yes. Uh, and in another way, it's almost like the best songs that I've written have come out in 15, 20 minutes without a thought. I've just sat down and there's a song. Mm-hmm. And I might change one or two lines a week or two down the track. But um, it occurs to me later often what what they're about. But sometimes I'll sit down and I'll, I'll try and write a song about something in particular and that, that can take anywhere from from days to years to complete. Mm. No, I'm just sort of astounded at the depth of that sort of concept of not facing your anger and having it sort of repressed and sort of slime out anyway, you know. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of an... An interesting concept. Mm, not only your anger, but your, you know, your demons. And, you know, the recognition of that and and, mm. and the acceptance of that. And Google uh, Don Mackay, get on the Reverb Nation, MySpace, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm under Dominic Mackay. I'm not, I'm not sure, probably Dom 